and it's Ken with Ken's Creations and today I want to do a quick video on the exciting world of compound paths. That's right. Um, the reason I want to do a video on compound paths is I've had a lot of viewers reaching out to me in regards on how to make them, how to release them, and specifically when tracing how to get rid of double lines. And all of that is in regards to compound paths. Now when I first got my Silhouette Cameo, I will be honest, compound paths really compound scared me. Um, I had no idea what they were. I had no idea why I would want to make them. I had no idea why I would want to release them. I saw it in my options, but I avoided it like the plague. Um, however, when I started playing around with print and cut, I realized how important compound paths were. And I realized I need to learn what these do and I need to learn how to use them to my advantage. Not only that, um, I also realized that when tracing, I could use the release compound path to do some pretty neat stuff. And one of my viewers reached out to me and wanted to know particularly how to get rid of double lines when she is tracing. And that's a release compound path function. So I thought this is a perfect time to do a video on compound paths. So I'm going to go ahead and show you in Silhouette Studio kind of um, how I use compound paths and how hopefully you guys can start using compound paths too because I know it can be a scary subject but once you see how easy it is and in layman's terms it is a pretty nifty tool. So let's go ahead and open up Silhouette Studio and get started. All right, everyone, so before I start the tutorial, let me go ahead and show you the version of Silhouette Studio I am running. I'm currently running the newest version as of September 5th, 2014, which is 3.1.417. And I also wanted to quickly explain to you what the um, definition of a compound path is. And the best way for me to describe it is with the letter A. Now, a compound path kind of refers to what I consider the donut hole effect. And it is basically taking two shapes, combining them and grouping them. And then what is left over is the voided space or the donut hole or the see-through shape, which is right there in the A. So as you can see here, if I was to select my A and release the compound path, you're going to see the middle of the A turn into a color. And that's because it's taken that void and released it and become part of that shape. And now if I was to ungroup it, that shape now becomes independent and I can move it away. So now there's my two shapes. So if we were to reverse that process, we would have our two shapes become one, group it, and then make it a compound path which then creates that void or that donut hole effect. And that's kind of how I describe the compound effect. Now, what do I use compound pack, compounding for mostly in Silhouette? I use it mostly for print and cut. Now, I use it mostly when I take a design like this that was meant to be a paper design cutting. So this was obviously designed to go ahead and cut on paper and layer it. So for example, here you go, this here was to be cut and then layered on here. So as you can see, if I was to fill this in with color, red, you could see normally it would cut out this where the white is, and then you would layer it and it would show through the color on the bottom. Well, what if I wanted to turn this into a print and cut file? I love these surfboards, but I want to print and cut it. Either use patterns or color, whatever how, whatever be. But I want to use different colors in every single one of these slats. You can absolutely do that by using the release and make compound path. So let me show you on this one here. As you see, when I tried to fill in that color the first time, it changed everything that same color which is a bummer deal. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go ahead and we're gonna right click on it and we're going to release a compound path. And as you can see, what that did is that it actually made everything that was one big design independent from each other. Now I'm able to click on each independent design and change it 
to the whatever color I want. So for print and cut, this is perfect because now I know that this can be whatever color I want it to be. Then I can change the back to red. Let's do pink. So now if I wanted to, let's say I wanted to go ahead and give it some definition. I could draw a box around it. Come up here to this line option. Hit this black to give it black lines. Now, here is a common mistake that I used to make in the beginning of my silhouette days. I would put my black lines around it. I would print it. It wouldn't print my black lines. I would print it again. It wouldn't print my black lines. I realized it was because my line thickness, even though I see on my screen black lines, is because my line thickness is zero. You have to make sure you turn up your line thickness. If not, it's not gonna print your black lines on your paper. I went through a lot of paper before someone pointed that out to me. Now that my line thickness is turned up, I know it's gonna print those black lines, I can print and cut this. Now, a lot of people will say, well, since I released that compound path, I wanna draw a box around it and go ahead and make a compound path again. No, you don't because it's gonna get rid of all that work you just did. So all you really wanna do is right click and hit group and that's gonna group everything for you and you'll be good to go. So on this one here, um, this one has already been released for you. So when the designer did this one, they actually never made this into a compound path. And the reason why is because this one um, doesn't need to be, nothing needed to be layered onto this. Um, it was a solid board. So they didn't want anything to be shown through or have void spaces to be seen through to the board. So there was no reason to make a compound path. So on this one, you can actually just go ahead and just start changing to whatever colors you would like. So we can just go down and change the colors. However, because they never made it a compound path, you're gonna see what happens here. When I get to my last color here, I'm gonna go ahead and change it to this pink, and it's actually gonna cover my back designs because it is the top layer of the design, which is okay, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually go ahead and right click on that, and we're gonna send it to the back now. So instead of it being the top layer, it is now the bottom layer. We're gonna draw a box around that, change my lines to black. And just like I told you, we're gonna go ahead and change that line thickness to 1.5. And you can change it to whatever, obviously, your happiness is. And then we're going to group it. Once again, we don't wanna make a compound path, we just wanna group it. And same thing on this one here. This one here is, once again, a uh, compound path, so we want to ungroup it. And now we can go ahead and change each of these colors to whatever we would like it to be. Now, when I discovered this trick, I will tell you it opened up a whole new world for me on my print and cut because now all of these designs that were originally just cut files now I can use as print and cut files. So there's some pretty cute designs that were in the Silhouette Studio that were not print and cut files, as I'm sure a lot of you are aware. And I used to always think, oh, I wish this was a print and cut file, but I'll just cut it out in paper. Well, with this, this process now, you can absolutely now change anything into a print and cut file using this option. So anyways, you get the point. So now I would be able to then change that and then just hit group and print and cut. So that's what I use the make and release compound path for with print and cut on this option. Now, how do I use it for tracing? Well, what I do is here is a cute little dog. I'm just gonna bring him in here. Now, I get this question all the time. So someone will say, I want to trace him so let's go to trace him. And we'll just do a really bad trace here for time's sake. And trace, move the dog out of the way. And people will say, because of the line, I get a double line. As you can see here, there's a double line. What do I do 
because I don't want that double line. I just want a single line and I want to be able to take my markers and color it in. Well, all you have to do is right click on this little dog and hit release compound path. And what you're gonna see is that big square is gonna turn into a whole bunch of little squares. See? And now you can actually go and get rid of the inner part that you don't want. Now you have to be pretty careful on which parts you don't get rid of because I'm gonna show you here. For example, right here, if we got rid of this inner part of his eye, it actually gets rid of the definition of his eye. So I would probably keep that one. Um, same with his nose here. You can get rid of that one though. Probably get rid of his, um, you might wanna keep his inner paw prints, but you can actually go through and kind of select the ones you don't want, um, so be it. But as you can see, you get the point on how to get rid of those double lines in any other case. Um, so might not be the best example that I use, but that's all you have to do is um, get rid of it. Now, it's really important, and this is where I will tell you, as you can see, when you release a compound path, it also ungroups your items. So once you are done manipulating your items and you know getting rid of your double lines, you wanna make sure you draw a box around everything you wanna keep and group it. Very important, because if not, see, it would be disastrous. You are gonna cry. So you definitely, definitely wanna group it after you are done. So that is how I use the release compound path when tracing, and that's how you get rid of those pesky double lines when tracing. So um, I use the right click a lot when doing the make compound path and release compound path. However, you can also hit the modify window up here and there is a make and release right there. And I know a lot of people do go there to get their make and the release. So that is where you can go to get that as well. All right, everyone, I hope that clears up a little bit about compound paths and how to get rid of those pesky double lines. If you have any more further questions or want some more in-depth detail, definitely go to my blog over at creativeken.blogspot.com. There is a contact button there that gives you all my contact information. Um, I would have went into more detail, but I wanted to keep the video relatively short. And sometimes on these compound paths, going into too much detail, we can get lost in the video. Um, while you're on my website, make sure to scroll down and make sure you're following my blog. You can follow me on Google. You can follow me on the actual blog and you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter and I would love to be able to give you my updates. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you are subscribed to this YouTube channel where I'll be giving you a lot more silhouette quick tips and make sure that you check those out. I get a ton of requests and I'm trying to get caught up on them. And if you do have a request, make sure to reach out to me. I would love to know what they are. And when I get them, I try to make sure to make a video on them. So thank you for taking a look at today's video. Um, if you liked it, make sure to give it thumbs up, share it, give me some comments. I would love to hear from you guys and tell me what you thought. Um, and the best compliment you can give me is sharing it with all of your friends. So thank you so much for t watching today's video. Don't forget, go into your craft rooms, get out your silhouette cameo, and go out there and create something magical. All right, guys, thanks so much. You're amazing. I adore every single one of you.